Bonjour tout le monde, c'est Nathalie Armstrong Moton. Hello everyone, this is Nathalie Armstrong Moton with Marketing Resolution. And today I get the pleasure of talking to a colleague who's just a bit south of me here in France in Paris. Um, he and I are going to have an idle chat for the American Bar Association's Section 4 Dispute Resolution. Salut, ça va? Ça va et toi, Nathalie? <laughs> ça va, ça va bien. Alexandra, I know that you have watched a couple of the videos, and so you know how the idle chat game works. I have all of these questions on cards, so we give the cards a, a shuffle, and then we find out what it is that you and I are going to talk about. Wow. And while I shuffle the cards, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the work that you do in Paris? Okay, well, uh, thanks Natalie for having me. I thought the Adel Chat is really fun, so I'm really scared about what's gonna come out of those cards, but uh, uh, I'm a practicing lawyer. Uh, I uh, joined the Paris Bar in 2015 or something like that. I uh, specialize in international arbitration. Um, I practice in an arbitration boutique here in France, uh, in a chambers in London for a few years. Uh, I taught international arbitration, private international law in uh, King's College in uh, Paris and Sorbonne. Uh, I retrained myself more recently into environmental issues, climate change issues, and I'm uh, working and monitoring all the um, uh, climate cases and, and especially the impact on international arbitration and investment arbitration. Uh, I recently joined Newsmundi, which is a, a, a great uh, legal tech startup here in Paris. Uh, we are a search engine in international law and arbitration. and. I'm mostly um, working on how to expand the database uh, into new areas of international law. So it's a new, exciting venture I'm, I'm joining right now. That is really exciting. A lot of fun things happening in our industry right now. Yes, indeed. Yeah, a lot of fun. And now you and I are going to have a little bit of fun with these cards, not pas peur. Hey. Uh, hey. Are you ready, my friend? I am so ready. Okay. Uh, oh, Alexander, the first card, what is the most expensive thing you've broken? Oh, um, the most ex expensive thing I've broken, it's a painting I bought when I was a lawyer from, it's not a painting, it's a, like um, photographs, uh, which I love from a New York artist and just fell off the wall because I was terrible at putting things in my wall and it just fell off and um, the photograph still exists but the the you know the frame was broken and I love that frame but anyway it happens to us all DIY is yeah. not for everybody no no I'm totally not doing works anymore by myself I'm I'm good at some stuff but not at that <laughs> that's for sure it's it is important for us as humans to know our métier Exactly. <laughs> where where is your strong you know where's your strong suit do you play to that and the rest you you know you you call the uh, the guy to come and do yeah, it yeah 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 I'll stick with legal issues perfect perfect <laughs> now here's here's a question on this next card that I think is absolutely apropos for pour en français because it's about food ah totally apropos right so the card reads an epic feast is held in your honor what will we be served on the table oh you know what comes to my mind when i when i hear that uh, um here in france we have a very famous uh, uh dessinée, like um, cartoon kind of asterix and obelisk and they make this tremendous feast with a lot of uh porks and wines and everything they find in the forest so i think i think i think about that or or otherwise a very kind of roman orgy with a lot of food on, on, on a very very big table with a lot of guests and that's totally how i see it outrageous <laughs> everything to excess exactly exactly that's a feast <laughs> that's a feast that's a feast all right uh the next card Alexander, what is the most interesting building? 
Um, one of the most interesting buildings I've been uh, into uh, was the Marina Bay Sand in Singapore, which I really loved. I actually was there for an arbitration conference and eventually I ended up doing a photo shoot on top of that roof, you know, which, which is this building with the three uh, big buildings and all linked with a kind of a boat on top. And there is a huge infinity pool on the top. And for some reason, I ended up during the middle, in the middle of the arbitration conference, went there for a drink by the pool. And then a, a photographer said, oh, do you want to be part of that photo shoot? I said, okay, why not? Sure. Took everything off, went in the pool and started a photo shoot there. And I thought, and the, the, the view was breathtaking. And, and three minutes after I was back in suit, back into my arbitration conference. And I had this great memory uh, about that very magnificent building, uh, which is really like a, a jewel of, of engineering and, and architecture, I think. It is remarkable. It is absolutely remarkable, that structure. You're, you're so right. You are so right. All right. And that's a great story. <laughs> um, Alexandre, if you were hired to show tourists around Paris, mm -hmm. what would you show them? Ah, that's very interesting a question. Uh, um, obviously I would, I would, I would, um, I think one of my dearest place uh, where I've been living a lot was Montmartre. I love that, 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 um, that little village inside of Paris. It's really like you have this sense of being in a, in a very small uh, town within this big metropole that is Paris. Um, and there are so many places at night which are really nice to, to, to hang around, which I will uh, obviously bring tourists, obviously. You need to go to see a good French cancan at Le Moulin Rouge. You need to, um, to go to Madame Arthur. You need to... Uh, have a have a bite at Le Bouillon Pigalle and all those very nice uh, French Parisian uh, place and obviously uh, during daytime you can go and have a walk within the park of the Moulin de la Galette which is a very old um, um, Paris had windmills at some point in the hills and, and that's one of uh, the latest one which is still a uh, well, it doesn't work, but there is a nice restaurant underneath and there is a private park where you can access if you, if you know the right person. So it's always nice to, to, to have a walk in that, uh, on top of the hill of Montmartre. Uh, that's kind of my secret places, but I have many, many others which, uh, which, which I, I, I like to show my friends when they come around. There are so many iconic things about Paris. Um, I read recently that Paris is the most visited city on the planet. Yeah, well, I mean, it, we know why. It's, we it's, do it's, know why. It is really, really remarkable. Yeah. And one of the, for me, one of the most pleasing things about Paris is that when you're just walking down a street, any street in Paris, you can hear every language in the world being spoken. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. You see every imaginable kind of fashion, every kind of food is available, every language, every religion, every everything that represents humanity is on the streets of Paris. Yeah, it is a totally diverse city, um, also starting to be very inclusive, the, the, the more and more, but it's it's uh, super diverse. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a great feeling. Actually, I've been living in many other countries, London, uh, Madrid, New York, etc. And just Paris is where I feel home. And I feel home because of exactly that diversity you were describing and 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 also the, the real mix of people. Like people are really mixing here. It's not uh, um so yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, and, and I, I agree it's not a political statement. No. It's not contrived. It's the human. the people organically, naturally mix and and have a really lovely a really lovely end result. So I like, yeah, Paris is good, especially the shopping. Exactly. Make sure, make sure to to ring me when you come down to Paris next time, Natalie. <laughs> right. you, you always have to save a couple extra sous just for the shopping. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Alexandre, what is your secret talent, sir? Oh, I have many. 
No, I'm joking. Uh, my secret, I'm, uh, I used to dance uh, when I was younger. So one of my secret talent, I might say, is dancing. The dance classic or autre chose? I'm more of a modern, contemporary kind of dancer. Very nice. Very nice. Well, then we'll go dancing. Get a little something to eat, have a little dance. Okay. All right. Um, in our industry, it is really common for us to be fond of books, literature, knowledge, education. That's just our industry. And when you are reading something, what's your preferred media? Do you like ebook, hardcover, paperback, audio book? How do you like to, to get your information? I'm very old fashioned. I need a old book, uh, paper book. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, nowadays for work, uh, we don't use much uh, paper books uh, and which is, which is good, which is good. Uh, less paper out there and better for the planet. Um, but for, you know, I have my own books, which I cherish and which I, which I like to share with my, with my, and uh, the people that I love, et cetera, which, which, uh, which is all, all, also a nice gift to, to, to handle. And so in my personal usage, I'm more of a uh, paper book and hard book and uh, yeah. It's, you get the full experience from a book. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you do. It's very tangible in light. It's like, uh, okay, this story is there in, this, in, this, in these little pages. Yeah, and you know, books have a specific smell and there's the weight of the book in your hand, and there's you know the physical turning the page, um, and you can flip pages back and reread something. It's, that yeah, particular it's edition has a particular story because it was from that hand, this hand, from my grandma to me now, and to whoever after me, and and, the, yeah. and they carry a story with them. So that's also very very emotional uh, when you right. know the story when, when uh, adding to the content of the book as well. Right. There is um, a used bookstore in um, the Galerie in Paris. Yeah. And I love finding the books that have an inscription on the interior. Yeah. And I like reading those personal notes that the grandmother has written for her yeah. grandson or that the lover has written. Or, you know, I love those little personal notes, the inscriptions on the interior. Yeah. So the book, I like the book, but I yeah. really, I really like finding books that have those little personal notes in the inside. I think that's. Yeah. And you have so many bookshops uh, uh, around Paris to, to actually, you know, find your, uh, kind of your, your dream books. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Shakespeare and Company is one of my yeah. favorite places on the planet. I love yeah. Shakespeare and Company. Really? Uh, I recommend to go there uh, to all my friends who come to visit. Uh, it's it's uh, it's worth worth uh, the detour. It is, and I like the backstory. And I won't tell our viewers the backstory. If you're watching this video and you don't know the backstory of Shakespeare and Company, you should Google it, and then you should go visit. It is worth it. Yeah, indeed. It is. All right, sir. Next card. Um, if you were given an unlimited budget to build and open a museum, what okay. kind of museum would you open? All right. Um, I would, uh, I like the open, the, the, the unlimited open budget. Uh, I like that. Um, I would make it a live museum. I would probably go into, um, making a place about mentorship, about um, providing the space for people to grant visibility to so many artists who, who, who do not have that kind of visibility um, with some, yeah, mentorship program, um, some missing up, I would call it here in French. Um, and yeah, and, and make it diverse from all over the places, uh, trying to reach to those artists that we don't see often because they're not in the, in the art business or art industry, but are really worthwhile from, yeah, making a very 
and also a cultural place that that lives with you know where where artists can meet can exchange can have their own atelier um so it wouldn't be like a museum a very typical museum it would more be like a cultural place where uh, people meet and and exchange about cultures with different exhibitions from different artists uh, from all over the world uh, selected for their talent rather their their uh, market values or uh, in the art industry and um, yeah make it a very fun performative uh, place to to gather um, um, i'd like a very old french uh, um, hotel particulier with an open outside uh, in the middle so obviously that's why i need the unlimited budget to buy that kind of place and make it lively i have a few examples already of places going towards the direction in paris which i really enjoyed uh, with different kind of arts um, uh, be it projection be it um, uh, live performance installation be it general exhibition photographs all that mixed together um yeah that's the kind of uh, museum i would i would i would totally build again on a very inclusive and diverse um uh kind of a kind of a background and uh and principle around it let's say i think that sounds lovely so it would be a a, a working learning artistic um environment just for for everyone i i think that's a really nice idea that's a museum i would go to and really enjoy going to i think yeah uh, I would call it cultural center rather than museum, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the idea. But obviously, you need uh, unlimited budget to to be able to do this kind of thing. There is actually one place in Paris who opened along the lines of what I'm describing, which actually gave me this idea that we should totally have more of uh, more of those places. It's called uh, it's on the thirty five thirty seven uh, Rue des Frambourgeois. Uh, in Le Marais, it's in a very old hotel particulier and has been, uh, now is being refurbished and will be sold to obviously uh, doing some more. Uh, but during a, the period of a year and a year and a half, and it's still open right now, they actually did that a sort of very mixed cultural center with different kind of exhibition from different kind of people, uh, mixing music with vis uh, visualized uh, visualization uh, projection I mean it was it was really something unique and I thought all museums should be like that I mean in, in the 21st how century how fun how yeah. fun I like that I really yeah. like that idea. On, on concept, it's called all right well now that I definitely have to come yeah come into the city all right so <laughs> last card Alexandra already oh well I'm sorry well we can continue if you prefer but the last card is what is the best dessert? Oh, that's a very hard question. Uh, what's the best dessert? Right now, my favorite dessert, and I'm really obsessed with that, it's the fondant au chocolat with, uh, with the vanilla ice cream. Simple, effective. And on top of that, you can put some salted caramel sauce. And that's the best of all the word you have this melting chocolate when it's done really at the perfection eight minutes cooking you have just outside a little bit cooked this chocolate melting in the middle the amazing uh, vanilla from madagascar ice cream and a very french salted caramel sauce this is a uh, heaven <laughs> c'est le meilleur c'est le meilleur yeah that's my favorite dessert at the moment but i also have a little um, a little something for a very nice Italian tiramisu. I'm very, as you can see, uh, traditional, but when they're just perfectly done, they're just awesome. And we are lucky enough to live in a country that really values and embraces and is very creative yeah. with dessert. Yeah. And so we're very spoiled in that way, uh, yeah. you know. Nice. Where that's why I haven't been very creative in my answer. I've been very basic, but you know, I like simple things and they make me happy. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with simple. Simple is good. Well, yeah. Alexander, it's been very nice having an idle chat with you. 
Um, and I wish you all the best. And so at the end of every idle chat, I ask all of my guests the same question. And that is, what do you love most about the resolution industry and the, the work that we can do as arbitrators and mediators? Well, uh, it's, um, it's a virus. I've been caught <laughs> in that virus, but it, there is a reason why I, 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 I am. Uh, you know, I've been an arbitration lawyer and I'm back uh, now in the industry at the different level now working with a, an amazing legal startup and doing, um, you know, I think a great job in terms of accessibility of international awards uh, uh, and, and rendering more transparent the dispute resolution system. Uh, that's something I really like to do right now. But um, what, why is our work uh, at all level, be it arbitrator, mediator, dispute resolution practitioner, etc., so important? Because it's the only, I think, alternative uh, for dispute resolution in a peaceful manner. Um, uh, we, we as human are tends to go towards conflict, uh, and dispute resolution is the legal way for us to resolve our conflicts in a peaceful manner um, and we, we've seen uh, that recently and this is why it's so important for us to continue to be dispute resolution attorneys, mediator, arbitrators, etc. and keep on, um, you know, this is human history and, and obviously we all not get along and especially when it comes to business and obviously dispute resolution is the tool to handle and settle our disputes peacefully. Oui, c'est ça, c'est ça. Well, Alexandre, thank you so much for your time. Merci bien. Merci uh, it was my pleasure, my pleasure, and I hope to stay in touch with you. Totally, anytime. <laughs> Merci right. beaucoup. Bye-bye. My, my pleasure.